So as I was saying, there is CD. You need two pieces of information to work with triangle CD. So you have to look around and you find a theta and a hypotenuse in that triangle. So of course, since you have theta and a hypotenuse and that theta is opposite of the side you care about, you are using sine 32 equals uh, opposite, so CD over 16, so 16 sine 32. And that will give you your answer. And if I'm not mistaken, it is around 8.5. Yes? Excellent. 8.5 for one mark. Now, please notice I asked for the expression, which means you have to show what you were going to do to find CB, which is this line right here. But since you know this is now 8.5, you could use Pythagoras, or you could have used cos of 32, or you could have used tan of 32. I don't care which one you used. You either have the square root of 16 squared minus 8.5 squared, or you have, uh, cos 32 is no where am I? 16 cos 32, or you have opposite over adjacent. 8.5 divided by tan 32. You have one of those three things. If you did those and gave me an answer, you still only get the one mark because you showed me your ex the expression you were going to use. A to C is right there. And of course, you recognize that if that's 45, that's 45. So A to C has to be exactly the same as C to D. So it was 8.5. And the straight line distance from A to D was down here. And you could have used sine, cos, tan, or Pythagoras to find it. And it was uh, 8. If you use Pythagoras, 8.5 squared plus 8.5 squared, square root, all that. And uh, it seems to me it is somewhere in the neighborhood of 128 square rooted around, uh, yeah, about 12-ish. To give you a mark out of four on that first page. Now, number five is the hardest question you will face all year in trig. Because... Well, just because. I gave you a big hint. You need two triangles. And I told you where you could find a good hint for this. So, where do planes live? In the sky. Excellent. But, if I tell you where a plane is from me, that would be a spot on the ground, right? So first, I go to the spot on the ground. There's the airport. And first, I go north 37 and then east 81. If the plane were on the ground, it would be right there, yes? Everyone agree? But the plane is not on the ground, is it? The plane is up in the sky. So this red line is actually how far the plane is away from me because the plane's up here in the sky, yes? This is six kilometers, so I need this hypotenuse. But to find that hypotenuse, I need that red leg, don't I? And that red leg is the hypotenuse of this black triangle. So the first thing I got to do is find that, which is the square root of 81 squared plus 37 squared, which, if I am not mistaken, is, uh, I cannot remember, actually what that is but it's a number I think that one's 89.1 and then once you know that is 89.1 you do Pythagoras again 
6 squared plus 89.1 squared and square root that and I believe you get 89.4 but it's been a long time since I've actually done this work so I'm going to quickly grab my calculator but again do I really care about this part is this the important part of this question to me what you actually have for a final answer there Uh, so square root 37 squared plus 81 squared. It's not the core of the question, it's just the base to get you to 89.1 squared plus 36. Oh, I lie. It's 89.3. I'm the worst kind of liar. I apologize, guys. Whew. So that gets you two marks. Because you had to do two things. Uh, you decide how much of that you did right. A great many of you left it completely blank, so it's real easy for you to mark. What? If we round it slightly different. Again, if you ask me about rounding, I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to stab it into my eye. So just A is fine. Okay. Just... I'm so tired of asking about rounding. I'm going to make you all sit through an 80 minute lesson on rounding the next time somebody asks me. Is that clear? Yeah. Is that clear to all of you? You're in the 10th grade. You need to know how to round. Then, then you don't need to ask me, do you? The angle along the ground where the airplane is. So I need the angle along the ground as a direction east of north. So I'm going to go back to my triangle that I drew on the ground, which was 37 and 81, yes? The direction east of north. Where is north? Always straight up. The plane, though, is over here towards the east, yes? So I need this angle right here. How do I find that angle? Opposite adjacent. What uses opposite and adjacent? Tan. So I have to shift tan of 81 over 37 to get an angle. Which is 65 degrees. Now, but I want it written as a direction the way I taught you how to do it on page 56, right? So we started north and then we moved 65 degrees to the east. You get two marks for this question. One for drawing it out right. And a second mark for writing it out right. And finally, the angle of elevation to the plane. That's the red triangle that we drew up top which we knew was 6 and 89.1, and there was theta. So again, that's a shift tan, 6 divided by 89.1, and I believe it comes out to something like 4. Oops, I did 9 divided by 89.1. What a maroon. 3.85, so yes, 4 degrees. And that is worth one mark, so you only had to do one thing. Any questions about the airport question? Excellent. Please notice it is no different than the question we answered that was like this. When you had to use one triangle to find the second triangle, except the second triangle, instead of lying flat on the ground, was pointing up in the air. Okay? Exercise your dog this week, huh? I'm just waiting for it to thaw and make a pleasant conversation. Yeah. Yeah? I did, too. I took my dog up to the Mission Dog Park where the Frisbee golf course is. If any of you ever take your dog to the Mission Golf Course or the Mission Frisbee Golf Course in Centennial Park, you find yourself over there with your dog for any reason, the fence is about two feet high. So as soon as you take, unless you have one of those little lame, useless dogs, like most people seem to have nowadays, 
you'll be okay. But my dog is not little, nor lame, nor useless. And as soon as he saw another dog walk by, over the fence. Like, completely cleared it, like a horse in j- horse jumping. Didn't even have to step on it. Speaking of dogs and just, you said useless, so that translates to dumb, so dumb people. No, it, wow, that's a long stretch, but okay, so go ahead. Thinking of dumb people and dogs, there's a person who, it's, there's this joke where it's like, you spend all our life savings on golden retrievers, just like the, on dogs. They're golden retrievers, I did it for us, and it's like... Oh, yeah, okay, I read you, all right, I gotcha. All right, height of the tree is the red triangle. You already had two pieces of information, so it's real easy. It is tan, 32 is O over 52, 52, tan, 32. I have no idea what the right answer is. I think it's 11 something. No, 20-something? I don't remember. That's 32? I... So 32 point... What'd you say? 49, so 32.5, 32.49, whatever you need. Total distance to the bottom of the canyon. That is the green triangle. Well, it would be green if I had good technology. Now, I do want to make a point of something here. Those geese are really loud. Uh, You've got, that's again tan. And in that case, it's 52, tan, 67 to get an answer. Which is 122.5. But that's not the answer because you've got to add the 32.5 to get 155 uh, meters, feet, feet. That's to get the full point allowed there. Now, this is fine for you guys, right? You get the two out of two, no problem. But remember, we're trying to uh, upgrade our math marking the way we mark you. Back to that rubric thing I've been talking about all year. If you wanted the four out of four, would you have done this calculation now? One straight calculation. So to get that four out of four, what I would have done was done 52 tan 32 in brackets plus bracket 52 tan 67 to get your final answer and then round it. Okay? Once again, I remind you, this is the A plus answer. Okay? By the time you're in grade 12, any math you're taking in grade 12 will probably be assessed on this type of scale. Okay? If you did this, you get the three. If you did this, you get the four. Everybody with me? Everybody's good? All right. Turn the page over. Two trees are 100 meters apart from a point halfway between. So it's fitty and fitty. Eight. Thirteen. Which tree is taller, red tree or green tree? Yes, the way I have drawn it, it is red because the steeper angle means it's taller, right? So what this is going to end up being, if I want to get that four out of four, that's going to be the red tree minus the green tree, right? Everyone agree? So I'm going to do that question like that. The red tree opposite over adjacent is 50 tan 13 minus the green tree, 50, tan, 8. Now, just to make sure on my calculator, where should the brackets go? There and there. All your calculators will do this right without the brackets, but like I say, start practicing using brackets. And you get an answer of whatever you get. 
Sure, sounds good to me. 4.5 meters. Anybody corroborate that? You have to answer something here. Centimeters, though, so you have to put the centimeters. Okay, so 450 centimeters. Any, that's corroborated. Somebody agrees, so I don't have to punch it in. Sweet. All right. Now, this question. I have fixed the map up, but we have two questions here. The first question says the sailboat leaves Roberts Point right here. Right here. Right here. Right ear. Left ear. Roberts Point. And it sails off to Coal Island, which is over here. So over to Coal Island, then over to Fernie Island, then home. So the triangle you're dealing with is that. Everyone agree? Yeah. We know that Fernie Island is 1,750 meters north of Roberts Point. So there's Roberts Point, there's Coal Island, there's Fernie Island, and we know that's 1750. And we know that sailboat leaves Roberts Point at a bearing of 016 degrees. Where do we start counting for directions? North. Straight north. And what direction do we count? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Clockwise. So this is the 16 degrees. And then all you got to do is find the other two sides. You must, you must do trig how many times? Once. You must do trig once. And then you can find the third side with Pythagoras if you wish. Or you can find the third side with trig again. Totally up to you. Which side do you have to find now? Does it matter? No. If I want to find the hypotenuse, then I'm using cos. If I want to find coal island, ferny island, I'm using tan. It doesn't matter, does it? So... I'm going to find the hypotenuse, that is cos, so that's 1,750 divided by cos 16. That's going to find me the hypotenuse. Excellent. Plus, then I'm going to use tan to find this side, opposite over adjacent. So 1,750 times tan 16 plus 1,750, because I want the whole triangle for how far the boat traveled. Bracket, bracket, don't need brackets there. And you get an answer of something like 5,000, I think it is, but I can't remember. 4,072.3. 4,072. Does anybody corroborate that, or do I have to punch it all in? Great, point three. Anybody corroborate that or do I have to punch it all in? There are some people that actually did this question other than Aiden. Do you have that answer? Pardon? You didn't? Then I have to punch it in. Plus. That is what I got as well. So Michael, understand where you had your error? Okay. And then the next question says I went from uh, I left Armstrong Point right here and I went to Kingfisher Point which is over here. And then I went to Curtis Point, which is over here. And then I went home. So the triangle with which I am dealing is this. Armstrong to Kingfisher to Curtis. The only part you know there is 800. But you know I took off at 307. This is straight north. So I got to go all the way around to 307, yes? I got to go clockwise all the way around. If I went all the way back around to north, it would be 360, yes? But I did not go 360 all the way back around to north. I stopped at 307. So I need this section right in here, 
which is 53. Does everybody understand that? Even if you didn't do it, does everyone understand that? Okay. So now, again, you're just going to use trig however you need to. I'm going to use uh, cosine, again, adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 800 over cos 53 plus a opposite over adjacent, 800 tan 53 plus 800. And you're going to get an answer there. Uh, I think it's about 3,000, but I don't totally remember. So I will just punch it in. Three thousand one hundred and ninety point nine. So those are worth two marks each because you had to know how to do trig and you had to know how to read directions. Two skills, two marks. Making that whole page out of one, two, three, four, five. Any questions about it? Okay, this question was the, also the hint for how to do the airplane question. Because the purple triangle is on the ground, but it shares that side. But it shares that... with the orange triangle. So you had to do work with the purple triangle first to find this side. So you had a theta, an adjacent, you needed an opposite, opposite over adjacent. So it's 30, tan, 69 gets me this side. Now I don't need that side till the end, so I'm gonna leave it like that. In my orange triangle, I need this side which is opposite over adjacent. Since I know the adjacent, it's gonna be that times tan 43. And then I can enter it all into the calculator at once. And what do you get for an answer? Going once. Pardon me? 83.81. Do we have any corroboration of that? What do you guys have? Don't think you did it wrong. Maybe you did it right. It's possible Michael made an error too. What do you have, Aiden? I have 72.875. 72.875. Does that get corroborated by anyone? What? You got 78.2. So we're all over the map a little here, yeah? All right. So this one needs to be actually talked about, obviously. So I had the purple triangle. Everybody is cool that it's 69, 30, and I need this side, yes? Everyone agrees? That's opposite over adjacent, yes? So I have tan 69 equals opposite x over 30. So this, this side is 30, tan 30 tan 69 which gets me 78.15 is everybody okay to there okay so now i know in this orange triangle this is the cliff right right here and I know this is 43, and I now know this to be 78.15, right? So now, again, opposite over adjacent, tan 43 equals opposite, which is the cliff, over 78.15. Since the number's on the bottom, it's multiply. So I'm going to have 78.15 times tan 43. 
and you get 72.87. 88, eight, actually. But again, that's, yeah, I'll give you two for that. Oh, to the nearest meter, yeah, so it should be 73. Really? You always got to get that wording in there just to mess with people's feet. Microwave tower. You had a question just like this in your previous work. There's the tower. The anchor point of one guy wire is 9.8 meters from the base of the tower, and that inclination is 37. It doesn't go to the top because the other one goes to the top and it's 58. So this one's 58. And then there's a second one, which is, uh, make that drawing a little better, 37. And then the whole thing is 58. I want to know how tall is the tower. And uh, along the bottom there, it's 9.8. Which one do I need for the height of the tower, the 58 or the 37? The 58. So that's going to be tan 58 equals opposite x, which I will actually write out tower as soon as I can. Tower over 9.8. So 9.8 tan 58 is the tower. What do you guys get for that? Even if you didn't do it, you should be doing it right now as practice. 15.7, that's fine. Now, I know I'm going to use this big long number later. So let's say you're not so good at writing out everything you're going to do. Right? You understand what I'm saying? But right now, my calculator has 15.68327838 on it. I know I'm going to need that number later, so I'm going to leave it on my calculator. I'm not going to push clear. Now I'm going to come back to the red one. I want to know how far from the top is the second tower. So I need this right here, that distance, yes? But to find that distance, I need this distance. And then I'm going to take that minus that, right? So that distance is going to be, if I write it out, it's going to be 9.8 tan 37, yes? I've already got this sitting on my calculator. So right now, if I push minus the minus button, and then I do 9.8 tan 37, I will get 8.3, which is what I want there. Right? And that's worth two marks as well. And finally, the world's longest suspension bridge. Mr. Myers, I don't know what a suspension bridge is. If only you had the repository of all information of the universe at your hands and could look it up. Talking about the internet? I am indeed talking about the internet. Or you're aware that almost every single bridge around us is a suspension bridge. A bridge, towers, wires. Lionsgate Bridge, Portman Bridge, Golden Ears Bridge. Some people might just think of them as bridges and not realize that they're a special kind of bridge. What? Alex Fraser Bridge. Nice one. I always forget about that one. Because until they put in that new highway, I never had to use it. So that's what it looks like. And then you just read the question. The towers are 135 meters above the bridge. 135. The angles of elevation are 10.8 and 18.65. You're going to use that, those numbers to find that side, that side. Then what are you going to do with those two numbers? Add them. And then what are you going to do with that number? Multiply by two because there's two sides to the bridge. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So the first one, opposite over adjacent. The unknown's on the bottom. So it's 135 
divided by tan 10.8 plus 135 divided by tan 18.65. Add all that up and then multiply it by two. And you get something like 2,115 meters or something like that. I can't remember exactly. 2,215? Anybody corroborating? You agree, Michael? Excellent. I'm happy with that if one other person has it. And that, again, will be out of two because you actually had to apply something to your trig. So that page is out of six. Six and five is 11. And two, four, five, six, seven is 18. And four is 22. Now listen to me, please. You're going to be writing a trigonometry test on Wednesday. Okay? I want you to have a couple of days to look this over and go back and make any changes you need. And if you need to come and see me uh, today at lunch or tomorrow at lunch, you will be able to do so. Is that the very last question? Yeah. Two. So you're going to write your trig test on Wednesday. Now, I have already made up one other trig quiz. That is, of course, a quiz, so it's not worth anything. Do you want to do that quiz tomorrow just for the practice? Uh -huh. sure. Yeah? So we'll do that quiz tomorrow? Then you've got one more also thing to study from. It's really short, and it's mostly multiple choice. So we'll do a trig quiz Tuesday. Remember that it will not be worth anything, and it cannot hurt you. Now, the astute members of the class will be aware that when we, once we write that trig quiz test, we'll have finished the second unit, yes? Which means it's time for a chance to fix those units if you did badly. All right? So you are going to get the first of your cumulative exams sometime after Wednesday. It will cover measurement and trigonometry. And once again, it will be divided in half. If you get a better percentage on that than you got on either the measurement test or the trig test, or maybe both, I will change your grade. Everybody understand? So right now, we are going to stop ever thinking of this question. Is everybody listening? I don't want to hear this question from ours how can I do better on my test question one I do not want to hear second question Mr. from ours do you do rewrites second question I don't want to hear got it because they have both been answered numerous times by my voice and in the outline that is at the first couple of pages of the book that you all carry around every day for math class okay all right, I know the screen behind me is blue. Do not worry. So we'll do that little quiz tomorrow and uh, we'll go with our test on Wednesday. Now, the only other thing that then needs to be decided by me or you is when, you, oh, one other thing about that cumulative test, you get to keep it. You know how I take back your unit test because every grade 10 writes the same one? The cumulatives are mine. I made them up. So you can keep it. Then you have some test questions at test level to study from for your final at the end of the year. All right? You don't have to come in and see me and dig your tests out of my filing cabinet and look at your each individual test. You, you'll have those. Okay? Now... Do you wish, and there will be no agreement on this, it's kind of like trying to order pizza, it can't happen. 
do you wish to write that cumulative this week as well? No, you want to push press that into next week? That's fine with me. Okay? Yes, indeed it is. Okay, we'll push it into next week. We'll probably do it next Tuesday. Okay? That second block for you guys, not first block. And it's not the day after a weekend. All right? All right. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here too. Cumulative one. What's the date Tuesday? What's the date today? The fifth or the fourth? Fifth. Fifth? Yeah. So tomorrow's the sixth, so it'll be March 13th. All right? Now, of course, again, the astute members of the class are aware that we cannot stop right now, right? We have to continue on with the next unit, which is indeed what we are going to do. Now, I'm going to warn you, we've done two units. This course of math is called Foundations and Precalculus, right? Because after grade 10, math splits into Foundations and Precalculus. The first two units that we have already done are very, very uh, aimed at foundations, okay? We've done two units of found the foundation side of foundations and pre-calc. Now, we're going to do a couple of units on the pre-calc side of things. What does that mean for you guys? A lot more X's and Y's. Okay? And if you would be so kind as to turn to what I believe is page 77, you will see the outline. And you can see what we, what we will. Ooh, that was some tough alliteration for my fat old tongue to get around. What we will be working. Oh, another W. What we will be working on for the next couple of weeks. Another W. Somebody stop me. That's like an octo U. Huh? W, four of them. Octo U. Four times two, eight, octo, octo, nothing, fine, it's not Thursday, I'll let it slide. Mm. Speaking of, I heard some appallingly good dad jokes this week, so, can't, no, it's not Thursday. All right, uh, so you can see what we're going to do here. Um, we'll start with exponents. Uh, radicals, in case anybody cares, is the proper name for roots. Right? You all know about square roots. We'll be doing all kinds of other work with them. And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. So if you could please turn to page 78. We will start with a review of exponents. Now, every single one of you in the ninth grade did every single bit of this already. You already know how to do it. But technically, in the ninth grade, you only had to deal with numbers here. But in reality, you could also, this just as easily could be written as X cubed. So that's the only wrinkle this year. All right? But you already know all of this stuff. So let's have a look at this. Most of it's review. Please follow along if you can. The screen is still blue. I tried to change it twice. Is it still blue? There we go. So this is where we're going to. Now... Powers are what we use to represent, and you can read that right there, repeated multiplication, which means you are 
7 to the third means 7 times 7 times 7, which you all already know. At least once in this unit, one of you is going to say, you're quickly, I'm going to say, what's 7 to the third? And one of you is going to say 21. You will. It's okay. It happens every year. It happens in Mr. DeVries's Calculus 12 classes. Ask Kelvin, he'll agree. Somebody always screws that up and says, 21! And then they realize, oh my God. And then they turn red and they hide. We still see you. It's okay, right? You're not ostriches. This we still see you. Even though when you were a baby, Peekaboo was like, oh my gosh. And your kid was like, ah, mom, I'm right here. Right? But no, in reality, it doesn't work. You can still see me. All right? So don't worry about that. Just think. Okay, is everybody good? All right. Now I'm going to use colors here. Where is the base? It is the seven. Now, it's like you read my mind. In grade nine, it was the seven. In grade 10, what else is it? Look at you, Kevin. Somebody stop you. <laughs> How can he high five you? He's being held back. <laughs> All right, cool. What? Now, guys, listen to the question now. I've asked, what is the base? You've told me it's seven. Now tell me what that means. It's the one being affected. The base is the thing that is being repeatedly multiplied, right? So the base is the expression we Repeat, multiply. Now, I'm, that's not good English. I should have said repeatedly multiply, but I'm too lazy to write it out. Everybody cool? So in this case, it's 777. Seven, seven. What is it? 777. Seven, seven. What is it in this case? Naughty. It's blue. I know. I saw it go. Now just wait, just wait. So it was X, X, X. Now, what if I gave you something that looked like this? What would that be? It's the sum of what's in the brackets. X plus three to the power. It would be, yeah, I, that is what it is. It would be x plus 3, how many times? Everybody cool? All right. Next, what is the exponent? Sure, Kevin, you're on a roll. 3, nice. What is it over here? 3, nice. What is it over here? Nice. And what does that mean? Excellent. How many, not how mant, how many bases we multiply. Now, now it gets a little weird. If that's the base and that's the exponent, what is the power? Isn't it all of it? The whole kit and caboodle. The power is the base and the exponent. And we read it as base with 7 to the third power. Or 7 to the third. What would this guy be? The guy on the left because my screen's frozen. How would you read that guy? X to the power of 3 or X to the third? What would this guy be? X plus 3 to the power of 3 or X plus 3 to the third. Is everybody cool? Okay. Now, 
Two exponents get fun special names. X to the 2 is X squared. X to the 3 is X cubed. Kevin, I think this might be your unit. <laughs> you just off to a fast start? Yeah. Okay. All right. X cubed. Everything else doesn't get a special name. I don't know why. Now, you guys are going to have about two, three minutes to fill in this form, this table. Now, there's a couple of things I want to remind you of. Evaluate. This is not always possible anymore. Not in the 10th grade. But what does it mean? It means what the power is worth. Okay, so no exponents, just a base. Now, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before I let you go on that table to remind you. We all know what the base is. We know it's 7, x, and x plus 3. Now, I want you to look closely at the red one right there. What is it about that red one that makes us aware that the base is x plus 3? The brackets. If I didn't have brackets, and I'm going to write this in green, x plus 3 cubed, what is the base now? Only 3 and only x, because x does have an exponent, which is what? 1. Does everybody remember that? Brackets, anything collected in brackets is one thing. So and that's why this has a base of x plus 3. And this doesn't. Okay? What about negatives? Is it the same thing? Let me ask you this. I'll write this one in gray. We know that that base is 7. What is the base here? 7. Why? No brackets. What is the base here? Negative 7. Which means this... What is this if I write it out properly? 7 times 7 times 7, and the whole thing is negative. What's this one? Negative 7 times negative 7 times negative 7. Everybody remembers that, right? Okay, do your best to fill in this table. It should take... Two to three minutes. You may talk to your neighbor. It is not a test. Mason. Yes, I can scroll back up because you don't need to see that table because it's written on your page. There are a couple of tricky McTrickleton ones. And a couple of them are too big to evaluate without your calculator. So I'm also checking to see who remembers how to do big exponents on their calculator. The nines are tricky because there's more than one answer there and that bothers you people. Because three times three is very obvious, but what else is there? Lots. No, it's got nothing to do with decimals. You can square root 9. Uh huh. It doesn't have to be necessarily square root. If you do the second version, then you can look at this like a 9 weird square root symbol with the shift, and then do like 4. You can see what finds itself, what to the power of 4 would equal 9. Uh huh. 
but every single one of those I've done so far is, has a crud ton of it exponent of decimals. I know. Which makes them very yes, difficult. right. For the uh, which one? That one. Okay. So if you've got two and you've got five, how do you end up with a negative number? That's what you're asking me, right? Okay. So what what's missing from that base? The negative. So you know that this power has to be 2 to the 5th because the base is 2 and the power is 5. But you need a negative to get the negative answer. So what must you have to write right in front? Negative with no brackets. Yo, you may borrow the calculator. I'm so dumb. You can On that machine, the little mountain symbol that looks like this is the exponent. Of course, we are going to fill this whole thing in in about a moment. So if you didn't get some of them, that's okay. For most of you, you haven't thought about exponents since you did them in the ninth grade. And for some of you, that was last October. So you needn't worry. Huh? Then, then they should know it a little more because they probably did it in the first semester of this year. We'll go one more minute. Please make sure if you're ever unsure that you have left, if you're doing your notes in pen, that you've left some space to make a correction. You should, of course, be writing your notes in pencil in case you make a mistake. Just like Mrs. Bag Crumble told you in grade three. Don't do math in pen! Mrs. Bag Crumble is my name for all elementary school teachers because when I was a kid, every elementary school teacher was old. Every single one. I never had a young elementary school teacher except student teachers. Well, that's what I'm saying. Now it's changed because all the elementary school teachers that were around when I was going to school have long since retired. They have to be replaced and they're replaced by younger people. But there's still a lot of older elementary school teachers and old high school teachers as well. Don't get me wrong. But I'm now at a weird spot in my career where there's a lot of new teachers. They're like 23, 24 years old. Mr. DeVries next door actually taught three of the teachers in this school right now. He taught them in high school. And that's creepy. That's pretty cool. Actually. I have my, one of my old student teachers is a science teacher at my kid's school. And one of my old students is a TOC in Chilliwack that has taught my son a few times. And it's getting creepy. It's making me feel old. Evan, of course, Evan, it's that time. All right, here we go. First line, what's the base? Two, what's the exponent? Four, what does that mean? Two times two times two times two. What is it? 16. Right? Yeah. What's the base in the second one? Three. Just three. What's the exponent? Three. Which means it's three times three times three, but what is out in front of it all? Negative. negative. What's three times three times three? Negative. Three times three times three is 27, and then there's negative in front, so it's negative 27. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. What's the base in the third one? Negative 5. The exponent is 2. So what is it really? Negative 5 times negative 5, which is? No. Negative times a negative. Positive 25. Yeah? Yeah. Fourth one. Base? 8. Exponent? 5. 8 times 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. I can't do that in my head. So where do I go? I got to go to my calculator. How do I punch that in my calculator? Again, it's different for everyone. 
but it is always the base, then some kind, whatever button is your power button. It might be, like a it might be a button that looks like this, a little mountain, which is called a carrot, not spelt the same way as the vegetable. It might be Y to the X. It might be X to the Y. Lately, I have seen, because people are so bad at math, I have seen this on calculators, X with a blank. It's one of those four. And then you hit your exponent. So it would have been eight, whatever button you have here, then five. And I believe the answer is 32,000 and something. Yeah? All right. Now we got to work the other way. What's the base here? What's the thing that's repeated? Six. Six. How many times? Five. Five times. So what's the power? Six to the power of five. Which is? 7,776. Yep. Now, what's that one? It's tricky. One. What's the base? Negative one. Negative one, because the negative repeats each time. How many of them are there? Seven. What's the power? Bracket negative one to the seventh, because the negative repeats each time. And the value? Negative one. Good. Base 10, exponent 3, 10 times 10 times 10, 1,000, 10 to the third. Now, right there, I also want to stop something. That, you should be very comfortable with the twos. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. That's a very, 2 is a very powerful number. Every time we deal with numbers, be good with the number 2. And the other one you should be good with is the 10s. 10 to the 3rd, notice, 3 zeros. 10 to the 3rd, 3 zeros. 10 to the 5th would have how many zeros? 1 and 5 zeros, which would be 100,000. Okay, this is the first weird one. This is new. X to the 3rd, what's the base? X, what's the exponent? What's that mean? X times X times X. Naughty. Can I fill this in? Why? You cannot tell me an answer here. This is X cubed. All right? Can't tell an answer there. This is the one that gave Ryan a bit of trouble. Since that's negative, I got to have a negative out in front. But I've told you that it's only the two that repeats. So it must be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 with a negative out in front. All right, now real tricky. I got two number nines and it's all blank. What's one way that I can make positive 9? Ryan, I can go 9 once. Okay, so that means the base is 9. And the exponent is 1, because the 9 only repeats once. What's that as a power? 9. We never write 1 as an exponent. That is one way you could do that pay, that line. Now I've got a second one here. What's another way? I could do 3 times 3, yes? So what would the base be? The base, 3, and the exponent, 2. How else could I do that? What would it be? No. But you're on the right track. It has to do with negatives. Michael? Negative 3 times negative 3. Will that get me positive 9? So what's my base? What's my base in red? Negative 3. My exponent doesn't change. So it's either 3 squared or... Negative 3 squared. Everybody cool with that? Which leads us to this tricky McTrickleton one. It looks barfy, but it's not, is it? What's the base? Negative 4. What's the exponent? So it's negative 4 how many times? Now, 
If I have a negative that repeats twice, I get a positive, yes? And then it repeats twice again, so I'm still positive, yes? And then it repeats twice again, so I'm still positive, right? A negative that repeats to an even number is going to be positive, isn't it? Except what's out in front? Another negative. So when I punch this into my calculator, I know that it's going to be positive, don't I? At the beginning. So do I need to add that negative or can I just do 4 to the 6th? I can just do 4 to the 6th. But what do I got to remember at the end? To put that negative back in. And 4 to the 6th is something like 4,096 or something. 4,096. And then I got to remember, I got this negative out front. Put a little star by that one because that's going to mess with you. We're going to finish with this easy one. Four. What's the base? Four. What's the exponent? Four. Four. Now, I want to take one moment to talk about this line. Okay. We're all comfortable with why this line works, yes? Okay. What if it was this? Negative, negative 4 to the 5th. How would it change? The negative repeats an odd number of times, right? So this is going to be negative whatever it is, yes? And then what's out in front? A negative. What happens there? That will become positive. Is everybody with me? Okay. If the negative base repeats, even, it's positive. Odd, it's negative. But this thing out in front means whatever you end up with changes. Gouda? Gouda. All right. Uh, you're going to end up with no homework tonight because we're not going to get through all of this. And that's okay because you're all going to be studying trig because you have a quiz tomorrow and a test Wednesday. So we're going to talk about, we'll probably get through one, two, three, four in today. Now, remember, in grade nine, all our bases were what? Numbers. Numbers, right? Integers. Now, if that works with numbers, then it also works with letters. Everybody cool? So we are multiplying, yes, we are multiplying powers of the same base. So if I have x squared times, what's my base here? x to an exponent of 3. What does this actually mean? That means x times x, yes? times, what does that actually mean? X times X times X, which gives me five. X to the fifth. So you basically yeah, that's what I'm getting to. But there's a reason I'm making you write this down because I've been giving exponent tests for 20 years and all of you know these laws, but I'm guaranteeing you by the end of this semester, when I show you the class average scores, this test will be the worst one. Even though you all look at me right now and say, Myers, exponents are easy. I get it. But this test will be the worst scored one. And I don't know why. So what's the rule? X, and I'm going to use more letters because it always works. X to the M, X to any exponent times that same base to any other exponent is x to the m plus n. Everybody cool? You add the exponents, no matter what they are. What if they were fractions? Then you add them, but you have to use the fraction rules that you learned in grade three. What if they were other letters? What if it was this? What if it was x to the two times x to the x, what would the answer be? x to the 2x? Yeah. 
What do I do with the exponents? Add them. So it is to the x plus 2. Not multiplied. Which would 2x would be. Everybody cool? You always add. What do you notice? They got to have the same base. So can I do this? Is that okay? Why? Different bases. That is not okay. Everybody cool? You guys are smart kids. We're only going to do number two and then we're going to stop. I do number two because everybody is good. Everybody understands this. But that can also be written as this. X to the five over X to the three. Right? What does x to the fifth mean? What is actually happening? There's five x's. And what is actually happening down here? There's three x's. What happens when you have the same thing on the top and bottom? Cancel, cancel, cancel. Because x divided by x is 1, right? What's left? x, no, not 2x. x to the 2. What's the shortcut? Subtract. So what's the rule? x to the m over x to the n is x to the m minus n. No matter what. Okay? No matter what. So what if I gave you this? X to the 3 divided by X to the 5. That would be X to the negative 2, which has its own set of rules, which we're going to come to tomorrow if you haven't seen them already. Everybody good? All right, that's where we're going to stop. Yep. Oh, yes, I see what you're doing. You're adding two bases. Yes. Yeah.